Hey, yo, what's up, guys? And welcome to Let's Get Real. It's a show where we talk about stories of faith, journeys of life, all with a very, very real twist with Christ in it. But first, let's get to the intro. Let's hear it. That's right. Now, today we got a very, very special guest with us. Uh, it's a she. So rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Often a lot, oftentimes you get a lot of men, right? But today we got a girl, man. Let's, let's hear it up, man. Yeah. Uh, now, she and I, uh, we, got a, we got a friendship. Lah, and we go, I think, quite some way back. We've worked together uh, a few times, actually. And uh, today, one of the most surprising things is when I heard that you know, she is today a child of God. Wow, and that really, really impressed me in my heart. And when I saw the story, when I saw the post, I told myself and my wife, like, hey, let's get her on and let's hear her story of how she came to know Christ, uh, especially from her background and her line of work, which is also very similar to mine. So ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in the show, please help me welcome on set, Miss Koyit. Yeah. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi, everybody. I'm Koyit. I'm a woman, not a girl. Oh, sorry, sorry. A woman. woman. Sorry, woman. For woman, woman. Very important uh, distinguishment there. Oh, yeah. yeah, man. Woman, you... When you're a woman, you make your own decisions. You you start to make mm. wise decisions. You think about life. Yeah. And actually, thinking about life, that what actually brought me to thinking about my religion, mm. God, and why am I on this earth, and yeah. all these kind of things. But Koei, first of all, I just want to say, I mean, just not on behalf of myself, but on behalf mm. of the entire team, thank you so much for saying yes. Because I know it's not easy, number one. Yeah, I and am so nervous. <laughs> you, I, I'm you got that. My armpits are so wet. I'm not kidding. Cover, cover, I, cover. <laughs> I have, I've recorded so many podcasts, right. but none of it I actually freak out since like a week mm, ago when mm. we had that phone conversation. Yeah. Because yep. uh, religion and, and my belief, it's mm. very, very private. Correct. I feel like it's something that is very close to my heart. Yeah. You know, on social media, you put so much stuff out there. Yeah. And the most of it is not real. Mm. It's just the good side of it. Yeah. But walking with God, it's not it's not always good for me. Yeah. There is good days, there's bad days. Mm. It's beautiful, yes. Yeah. But I think it's because it's so private and yes. it's so personal. It's, it's so personal yeah. and it's so precious for me. Yeah. When you talk about it, you feel like, oh my God, I don't want it to go away. Mm-hmm. And that's so why I gotta say on behalf of all of us, we just wanna say and start off by saying, uh, thank you. We really appreciate you for for number one, saying yes, because it's not easy. I prayed about it though. I and did. I, I prayed about it and there's a that God didn't tell me, yes, you do it. <laughs> God didn't tell in me, no, Morgan you Freeman do it. Freeman voice, no. 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 <laughs> I wish. Yeah. Um, no, it wasn't. It was more like, um, there was no no. Mm. It was more like a peace thing. Yeah. I don't know. I never, until today, I still don't know how to explain God. Well, it's a piece that surpasses all understanding. I can tell you that much. And okay. that's the joy that we have because okay. the joy of the Lord is our strength. Okay. So yeah. So thank you so much for saying yes. And I know it was very nerve wracking for you from all the conversations that we had. I know this is a very bold step of faith for mm, you. Yes, it's not it easy, like you said, to talk about and pretty much lay your life out there in public. And this is not the life that you're talking about what you say. It's not a life on social media where it's so easy to put out all the good things. Mm-hmm. It's a part of life where it's very personal, very private. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a journey that, you know, there's so many ups and downs. And more often yeah. than not, there's more downs than ups. And mm-hmm. to bear that, you know, in front of everyone to share, this is why I want to share it because God has been so good to me in my life. Mm-hmm. It's not an easy thing. So I want to applaud mm-hmm. you for that as well. And I just want to say thank you for being thank able you. to come thank here to you share your story. You You're you. very welcome. Now, of course, we all know you, Koyit, as mm-hmm. an actress. Mm-hmm. We all know you as uh, the girl on Instagram as well, mm-hmm. posting on the funny videos, you know, <laughs> even sometimes <laughs> making a fool out of yourself, but out there to make people laugh. Okay. And that's so cool. But of course, today, when we invite you on the show, like you say, we want to talk and get to know the other side of Koyit. Okay. Which is Koyit, not the end thing. What do you want to know? <laughs> oh, wow, <laughs> restarted it. She's very confident, yeah. But the Koyit who is, you know, um, not not the YouTuber or not the actress that's mm-hmm. been in movies, mm-hmm. that's been in series and everything like that, just to get to know the other side of Koyit. Like my background. Yes. Like what? Well, so I'll um, ask you, I'll ask okay, you. So what okay. we want to do is just go back a little bit in the past. Okay, all right? let's, okay. let's just take a time capsule and go back to the beginning. Okay. And what I mean by the beginning mm-hmm. is, uh, w- yeah, what you said. What, what was it like growing up for, for you? What was it like growing up for Koei? What was your family background like? Did, did, were you, were you, did you have even strict parents? Yeah. What was it like for you? I, I come from a family of uh, free thinkers. Yeah. So three generations, three thinkers. My grandmother, mm. my grandfather, even my great-grandparents, they, uh, my parents mm. and my cousins as well, 
every one of them are free thinkers. But I believe my great grandparents are not like free thinkers, free thinkers, mm. but they pray to whatever people ask them to pray to. Yep. Uh, but not a specific religion. Mm. Uh, so growing up, my parents always told me, good things come to you when you do good. So mm. all the pressure is on you. Right. And if you don't do well enough, it's because you didn't, do, you don't get the praise because you didn't do well enough. Mm. It's never, and the blessings that you get are probably from your parents or right. something you earned, but never from God. There's, there is never um, a superior being. Mm. However, they say there is ghost. Oh. So, <laughs> you know, I never understood that. Right. But that's what they said. Mm-hmm. Um so, so basically, it's like you have to earn something. Like, or yes, it's performance-based, I, I would say. Yeah, I always had a lot. Uh, growing up, I had to... I, I go for a lot of tuition classes. I go for a lot of uh, extracurricular right. activities. And I always have to try to do my best because n- what I do, what I have, is what I earned through hard work. Mm. And that, I don't know, as someone who is Christian, I don't know if you understand that I am never blessed with things. I yeah. Everything is my own hard work. Correct. So if I wake up one day and I feel like shit, I feel like shit the whole day mm. because I just don't think I'm good enough. And with that, people's praises is very important. Mm. Like People's recognition are very important. Mm. And what people think is very important. And that creates an immense amount of pressure on yeah. me because people are never happy. Yeah. Uh, no one loves you for you. Yeah. Everyone loves you because... You're good enough. That's why I love you. Mm. I love you because you're good. Mm. That is not... That is not... And you're always chasing it. It creates yeah. a sense of where you're always after something and once you get there... That doesn't make me happy. And then the bar gets higher. Oh, yeah. And I grew higher. up with so much anxiety because I grew up in the entertainment industry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I started acting since I was five. Right, you were a child actor as well, right? Yeah. Mm. So everything that I do, I have to earn it. Mm. And you are good only... Because people say that you're good. So I grew up with a lot of anxiety that I have to be good. I have to prove to people that mm. I'm good. Then only people will love me. Mm-hmm. So that was something that governed my entire life. Me, my th- It's our goal mm-hmm. to make people like us. To, to We all want to be loved. Yeah. And it's very, very hard to be loved. Understand. There was no peace. I never understood the peace that I have. Now, mm, mm. now, of course, of course, as when you say you know you grew up, your parents the same time it's like a double edged sword because they expose you to all these things, which is great, you know, because mm-hmm. it kind of also builds your self confidence being in front mm-hmm. of camera, being in front. Not of really though. Not really. Oh, your no. parents. Did, I no. thought they were the ones at five years old. Come no, on, no, no. It had I to actually be was who scouted. I was scouted. I see. Yeah, my parents never wanted me to be an actress. Ah. Yeah, it was all by chance. Now right. I would look back at it and say, oh, it's a blessing. Yeah. But by back then, I. I never thought I was good enough. I never thought that I was. I was never very. I was never a confident kid growing growing up. Until today, I'm still not very confident. Mm, mm. It's s- just very strange. I, it's a long story. It's away from God. It's. Mm. Oh, I don't know how to explain that. No, to I you totally right understand. Now. Yeah. But yeah, I was never. It was never like I was so confident. I was. I feel like I'm. I should be loved. I never felt like I should be loved. Mm. I never felt like. People should love me because mm. I always look back and think that I, I, I'm not good enough. Right. Mm. So it's interesting because you come from a background where people would think that you have all the confidence in the world mm-hmm. because you're in front of camera, you're acting, you know, mm-hmm. there's lights and everything like that. And you're so probably used to that. Mm-hmm. And when, when push comes to shove, you're able to perform up to people's expectations. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to know that you didn't actually grow up with a lot of self-esteem, no. I think it's quite a shocking thing to hear, honestly. I, su- I don't know. Yeah. A lot of people, I maybe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, I guess a lot of people think that growing up under the limelight, you sh- are supposed to be, because everything is given to you, all the spotlight is on you, you're right. supposed to be very confident, you're supposed to be very proud of yourself, but it's not actually the case. Mm-hmm. So it's way less glamorous than people think it is. Oh well. yeah, yeah, most of the time. Now let's go back a little bit. So you come from a, a childhood where it's, I would say it's a very high intensity thing. It's very high pressure. There's mm-hmm. a lot of expectations mm-hmm. growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, now let's talk a little bit about God, of course. You know, which is the one of the main aims of this this mm-hmm. uh, this interview. Mm-hmm. Now I'm very interested to know this. When and where did you first hear the name 
Jesus Christ in your life as far back as you can remember when is the first yeah. time you hear like oh <laughs> yes so or yesu you know or the word Jesus Christ when I, and where was it uh, do you I remember think, or not yes I okay. remember uh, it was a Christian camp that I attended uh. I think I was about five no not really six or seven so you went for a Christian camp yeah. Did you know it was a Christian camp? Or I you got did scammed not know it? it was a Christian camp. <laughs> oh, wow. It was because my parents uh-huh. were friends with another family. They okay. were a Christian family. And they brought their kids to a Christian camp uh-huh. at Cameron Highlands. So Man, Cameron, can I just put out that Cameron Highlands <laughs> is the... I was just sharing with you just now as well. You know, Cameron Highlands is like the typical place where a lot of churches go for church camps. And without yeah. saying the name of the place, I think I can guess where that field, place is. There's a field, there's bunk beds in there as well. Yes, there's yes, a, there's a, a hall in there yes, as well. There, yes, there's a little it's like camp. a school, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, I definitely know where you're talking about. Anyway, sorry, continue with okay. your story. Okay, so <laughs> the parents wanted to have fun. Mm. So, but the kids, how? So the kids, they throw them into a Christian camp wow. and be there for like three days, two nights. Uh, standard and then, timing as well, by the way. Yeah, and then the parents will come pick us up yeah. and they'll ask us how it's like and everything. Uh, so because my mom wanted to spend some time with her, my parents wanted to spend time with their friends, mm, mm, I mm. was thrown into a Christian camp with their kids who right. were Christian. And there were two groups of people. The older group... Uh, that had all the Lang uh, and uh-huh. the younger group that I was in. Mm. So the guys are not very handsome. <laughs> the guys are all shorter than me. Because the, the older, older group had, had more handsome uh, guys. Sure. But I don't know. Because I was not old enough. Because you were six me. years old. Come on, Seven, 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 seven I think. Seven years, seven years old, old, yeah. I think six. Yeah, about that uh, age. Okay. And then... Um, it wasn't fun. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't fun and I didn't like it. Because it wasn't no fun yeah. because uh, the older groups, uh. they were the guys and the girls could sit on the field and they could talk about God. Okay. And they could talk about the Bible. Uh. But the younger ones are stuck in the room doing coloring, coloring Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I wonder really. what color do I color <laughs> Jesus? <laughs> coloring or we had to build sentences or I, something like that. Some right. workbook thing that was very boring. Uh. And... Um, I can imagine the scene, by the way. You in the classroom yeah, drawing and Jesus Christ. And then out there, you see the Lang Chai there. Yeah. You know, like, man, I should be sitting next to him I like, know, while I'm here it's drawing and really coloring. Sad. Yeah, the guys around me were shorter than me. It's not, right. it's not very fun. Okay. I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it. Mm. And I didn't like it also because um, me and my brother, we uh. joined it because we siblings, we all went for it together. And we love dinosaurs. Okay, okay. And I, we th- I think my brother and I, we got into sort of like a mini altercation with the leader that we had. Because we asked him, uh-huh. why the coloring book no dinosaurs? Uh. And then he's like, oh, because dinosaurs are not in the Bible. Oh. Di- dinosaurs don't exist. We were like, no, you liar. <laughs> Christianity is a liar. That's what we we thought. And right. we were like, never coming back. So when we left, my mom asked us, so how was the Christian camp? Yeah. We were like, Lie, yeah. yeah, bluff us one. Never want to come back. Not so only were they liars, no Lang Chai, all shorter than me. I didn't tell oh, my you mom didn't tell that. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Very nice of you. And I, <laughs> and I think after that, we never like never heard of any Christian camps right. ever again because my parents thought that we didn't like it. Ah. And we never gotten to church and that's it. I think the other times that we actually gone to a church was someone's wedding. Ah, uh, okay. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah, and that's about it. So, but what was your perception though? Because I... I mean, growing up as well, uh, mm. I, I'm pretty sure you would bump into Christian friends, uh, you would bump into uh, the name Jesus Christ. Mm. And what was that experience like that, you know, and w- as you grow up, as you journey in life, what mm-hmm. was your perception towards Christian? Because I mean, yes, th- by the way, dinosaurs do exist. Just in case you are, <laughs> <laughs> just to let you know, uh, dinosaurs do exist, yeah, right? Yeah, just yeah, just, just do, to give do, you, do, yeah, do, yeah, they do, they do. They do. All right, kids, if you're watching <laughs> out there listening, Dancers, they do exist. Uh, I'm so interested to find out who that leader is, you know, and I, I hopefully one day remember. talk to him. It's a guy, yeah. Good thing okay. you don't remember. Good yeah. thing you don't remember. <laughs> um, yeah. But what's your perception towards Christians growing up, you know, as you okay. get older and older? Uh, one of, so I have, I'm very blessed to have a lot of Christian friends right. uh, in my life. My best friend is Christian. My two best friends, two of them, mm. they're Christians. And they were, they were not very pushy. They always tried to make me understand uh but I, I just never, nothing happened to me mm. or I never found a reason to understand it. Yep. Uh, I met some very strange Christians and I met some very normal Christians. I met Christians who just don't talk about it because it's their own belief. Mm. And what I realize now is that these people are not a definition of what Christian mm. Christianity is. Right. I always thought, and because that was what I was 
brought up to think that if you believe in Jesus Christ, the people that believe in God are the representation of God. Mm-hmm. When it's not, because people are not perfect, mm. and God is perfect. Mm. But we never, I never understood that. Right. It was always like, oh, mom, my friend wants to bring me to a church. Mm. And then my parents would say, Aya, don't go lah. You see that Christian guy at the end of the street, he lied to me or he cheated my money. Uh. And it was always, uh, y- people were always used to 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 be a, an example yeah. of what God is. Mm-hmm. Until you really experience it, then it's very different. Right. Uh, I can share an experience of <laughs> mine when I went to church. Mm-hmm. Because uh, my once, a, a couple of long time ago, um, my best friend brought me to church. Mm. It was a church in Subang. Uh, I don't know <coughs> the name. And I was traumatized. <laughs> I remember this. <laughs> this is going to be good. Yeah, I remember sharing this. I was, <laughs> yeah, you guys need to hear this, all right? I never <laughs> try to imagine a girl. Never been, uh, the yes. only church that I go to was like wedding for weddings yeah, or yeah. whatever. And then after that, 10 years down the road, uh-huh. I, I've been to one. And my friend brought me there. And she said, oh, it's going to be a good experience. I went and, uh, you know, you go to church and they'll ask, who is the newbie here? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I didn't dare to raise my hand. But my friend <laughs> was like, r- p- drag my hand up into the air and said like, she's new. <laughs> they brought me to the front of the church. Uh-huh. Everyone touched my head, touched my body and said, oh, I'm going to pray for you. I was like, yeah, yeah okay. Fine. <laughs> and then they started praying in tongues. Right. I never experienced people praying in you tongues. Mean, Immediately when they prayed for you or? No, they was like, oh, uh, a heavenly father, whatever. Uh, and then, they, and then they, I was like, oh my goodness, hell. <laughs> I, I was scared. Right. I didn't have a good experience. And they were like, la, 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 everything. Uh, and uh, around uh, me uh. for a good, I felt like it was like 10 minutes. Uh, probably about two minutes maximum. Max probably, yeah. And then uh, mm. it was a lot of touching. It was a lot of praying, a lot of raising your hands yeah, up in the air. Yeah, oh, yeah. now when I go to church, I raise my hands yeah. up in the air. <laughs> but I didn't know. So right. the person next to me was was touching something that I couldn't see. Uh-huh. The person on my right was like feeling something that I couldn't see. Mm-hmm. That was very scary for me. Right. So it's just like a like really like a duck I out of water. I think I think now when I bring friends to church, I will tell them, you know, things like that is gonna happen. Okay. But that is not the representation of God. Yeah. That is just them doing their own thing. Yeah. You don't have to do that. Now when I go to church, when I see people doing a funny thing. Uh, uh, uh. I just try to imagine that it's people, that their way of going, uh, for example, everyone goes to the toilet very differently mm. because it's a private moment mm. and it's their private moment mm. and they just are so comfortable with it that they mm. decided to share it in church. So try to not focus on that yes. and focus on whatever you feel yeah. when you are in church. Oh, that's a great that's it. Uh, analogy, by the way. Just It's a private moment because it's between you and God and the audience yes. is God. So you yes. shouldn't... Be bothered about what people yes. decide behind when in front I of you. I went there, when <laughs> people start praying for me, my friend was next to me, she was yeah, laughing. Yeah. She's like, yeah, that's so good. I'm yeah. like, no, it's not good. <laughs> so from dinosaurs do not exist to, you know, people... Oh yeah, this praying one, in tongues. Yeah, praying in tongues when I, you didn't I, understand yeah, it at all. No and way. People touching you, understand. praying oh, for you. So without without And I didn't go back to church ever again. Right. So, yeah. so your perception towards Christian uh, was probably like they're a strange bunch of people. Yes, very yeah. strange. Uh, um, um, I just, I just never understood it. Right. Just strange, quite scary. Yeah, and I mean, it's great to hear that today you raise your arms, you know, or you raise your hands when oh, you worship yeah, man. God. I, I do. You do, I'm right? Like, woo, woo. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, you don't scare the person next to you, lah. Huh? No, like, yeah, some more. Let's get, no, because yeah. when you go to church <laughs> and you sit in front, yeah. Uh, people who are in front all raise their hands. So uh, it's normal to raise your uh, hands. So it depends on which crowd you sit sure. and you join. Yeah. Makes sense, makes sense. Mm-hmm. So now, today you are a child of God. So now mm-hmm. I want to fast forward a little bit. You shared a little bit about your background. You shared about your parents. One thing I just wanted to point out as well is that your parents, I think, are quite cool because, like you said, your parents wanted to have fun in Cameron Highlands. Yes. And they... I, I don't know whether your fr- your parents' friends told them that it was a Christian camp, but I, nonetheless... I believe they told them. I believe they did, right? Yeah, but my parents were like, yeah, they won't understand. I'll just go to the other. Right. I just want to have fun. I think it was more like that. And just based on this story, I think your parents are pretty chill people. So fast forward to now, uh, mm. but before we get to your parents, if you don't mind me asking, how did mm. you... Uh, because you were sharing me a story about mm. your friend yeah. who... who and this goes back maybe even 10 years ago, right? I was uh, 15, 16, I think. Right, you were 15 or 16 years mm-hmm. old when this friend uh, you were telling me about. So yeah. what led you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? 
you've come a long way from then until wow. now. I think it was the journey mm. that allowed me to understand God. Yeah. Um, I won't say it's one thing that I don't. Won't say it's one thing that happened. I would mm. say that it's since. The fact that I've been to a Christian camp mm. and the fact that I've been to church where people pray for me in tongues mm -hmm. and, oh, I didn't share this with you. Right. Uh, I met Nick Vujic. Ah, the, 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 the man guy with the arms limbs. and the legs. Yes, yeah. with limbs, and, yeah. And also uh, a Bible that a stranger gave me and mm. I didn't understand it. I was like, I'm not going to use this book and I don't want to waste a pretty book and yeah. I gave it to my best friend mm. and my best friend prayed for me. I think it's, everything mm. that made me believe in God because I feel like all these coincidences wouldn't happen yeah. if it's not for God. Right. So... Okay, let me talk about my friend's story. Yes, this is one that I'm quite interested because when you told me, I found this story so amazing okay. uh, about this friend of yours that was 10 years ago. Yeah, because it's a testimony of how patient God is. Yes. So, uh, a friend gave me, a stranger, not, not even a friend, an acquaintance gave me a a Bible, mm. a very pretty Bible with flowers in front of it. Mm. Uh, it's green and it's leather bound. And I had it and I tried to read it. Never understood a single thing. Uh, I was like, oh my God, it's such a long book. It's such a boring book. Never mind. I'm not going to throw it away because mm. it's it's a, 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 a... It's like a gift as well. Yes, so it's not it's very nice. To just and it's a very pretty book. Right. So I gave it to my best friend. Mm -hmm. first, and I told her, nah, you Christian ma, I give you lah. Uh. I give you, you're going to use it. I'm not going to use it. And she's like, no, no, no. Bible is for you to understand God's love for you, so you keep it. Mm. And I told her, I'm never going to read it. If mm. you give it to me, I'm just going to throw it away. And she felt bad, so she kept it. And she told me, she went back to a church and she told her pastor about it. She asked her pastor what was she supposed to do. Mm. Her pastor said, just keep the book, mm -hmm. keep the Bible, but pray for her. And God will understand and God will do his, his thing. Mm. God will, will bring her to him mm. and she said that was what she did so she kept the bible mm. and she prayed for me she said she kept on praying for a couple of months and then after that she gave up because she said i'm the last person these these are her words yeah. okay she said i am never koyit is the furthest person or the the, the last person on earth who's going to believe in god because mm. i'm the one who goes out there and tell i i went to people like christians and i said like so that was Adam and Eve, right? Uh -huh. And then Adam and Eve had two boys, right? Mm -hmm. And then what? The mother slept with the child to have more kids, is it? I'm the one who went around asking people stupid questions like this. And I asked questions uh, like like stupid things. Like, oh, God's, uh, ma your mother's love is just a part of God's love. Mm -hmm. and, and, and even if I slept my mother one day, she will never put me to and she will never throw me to hell mm, mm, mm. but just because i don't believe in god god will put me to hell why like mm. god doesn't even love me it's all conditional i would go around and ask people questions like this and it would upset her so much she's like i'm never gonna pray for you whatever again <laughs> you can go to hell lost well, lost, uh, lost, lost cost, cost. lost cost yeah. <laughs> and she she said 10 years later yeah. after everything i called her yeah. and i said hey um i'm gonna be baptized today mm. or next week you know i said next week mm -hmm. are you gonna come yeah. she said she broke down in tears mm. she said she already stopped praying for me mm. but god remembered her prayers mm. from more than 10 years ago when she said like god please this is my best friend i want you to save mm. her please let her understand you and believe in you and when i called her and told her about it i said, uh, I, said I finally accepted christ and uh he's my lord and savior mm you please come because I want you to be there because mm. you were one of the first few people who introduced God to me because she, she actually tried. Yeah. And um, she actually yeah, cried. She said it's the happiest day of her life. Mm. That's beautiful, by the way. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. She said when I already don't have the patience and I already don't love, I don't have faith in this girl anymore. God still had faith. Mm. God was always faithful. It's just that we forget. Yeah. And you're right. We are very forgetful people. Very we often forget God's goodness in our lives. Oh yeah, me all the time. Mm. I was telling you this yep. that I yep. have a journal yeah. that because I'm still very, very passionate about because I'm a very new Christian yep. and I'm still on fire about it. Still very passionate about it. Mm. So I don't want to forget mm. what the good things that God did for me. Mm. You know, in a relationship, 
the other person will remind you like, hey, I bought you coffee last week. Mm. I'm a good girlfriend, you know? Yeah. But God doesn't do that. Mm. He doesn't remind you. You just have to remind yourself. So I started writing it down mm. and I tend to look back and it reminds me of all the good things that God did for me. I was mm. looking at it just now, just in case you will have some questions to ask me. So I have something mm. to say mm. and I forgot a lot of things, a lot of good things that God did that I I don't remember anymore. I was like, oh my goodness, that happened. Mm. God loves me so much. Because mm. sometimes we get complacent yeah. and we only remember the good times and during the bad times, you don't remember that God was good. But during the, when, when it's the good times and, and something good happened, you're like, praise the Lord. Mm. But when it's bad, you don't praise the Lord that it's bad. Yeah. You'll be like, oh no, it's bad. Mm. God save me. Mm. Yeah, so but, yeah. This journaling thing, has it helped you a lot? It, uh, it did. Mm. It did. It helped me understand my journey a lot better it helped me remember the good things yeah. and it helped me remember to pray and remember to talk to god mm. because when i don't do that i go back into thinking oh i am who i am today because of me mm. uh, because of my hard work and nothing is god and because i grew up thinking that yeah. everything i do and everything that I have is the results of my actions yep. when it's not. Mm. Everything that I have is a blessing from God. Mm. And that made me very proud. Mm. Um, so writing it down reminds me of how small I am mm. and how I am what I am because of a higher being, because yeah. of God. Wow, that's awesome. Now, I want to <laughs> talk a little bit about your parents yes. because um you know when we were talking everything like that i think your mom is very very chill and things like that but you are a first generation christian i am a second generation christian so i mm -hmm. had my own different sets of challenges and you know mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. trials that i had to mm -hmm. go through mm -hmm. but obviously being a first generation christian let me say it's not easy in uh, your family yeah. you are the first, first right uh, yeah my cousins my family extended family everything first uh, I won't, they are chill, mm -hmm. as in they won't fight with me about yeah. it because I don't fight with them about it. I mm. don't argue with them about it because I don't want them to feel that it comes from a very, like, oh, if you don't believe in God, mm. God won't save you. I never told them that because I believe if some one person in the family is saved, yeah. the entire family is saved. Amen, yeah. But, so I won't tell them that, oh, mom, you will go to hell because yeah. I don't feel like God comes from a... a, a I don't think God wants me to share that. I think God wants me to share the love that he has yeah. for me. Yeah. Uh, he has for me. And I just share whatever love that I got from God yeah. or what I read from the Bible. But but I won't say it's easy. Yes. Uh, I won't say that they don't complain. What they, was the first reaction of him? I'm, I want to know this. Oh. Like when you first told her like, okay, me... I'm getting because I, I saw on your on your Instagram that your yeah. your parent your mom was there right your yeah my your, mom and my dad correct. my entire family no exactly yeah was there for my baptism so that was a a, pl a pleasant surprise because I would imagine being a first generation Christian coming from a family of atheists they're probably thinking like oh my gosh she's gonna trap me I think it's a on very it. gradual thing okay. so it started I started understanding <laughs> more about God from Alpha Course okay and when I did the Alpha. I read the Bible every day with my now boyfriend. Mm -hmm. At that time, we weren't boyfriend. We weren't a couple yet. Yeah. And uh, when I started reading the no, when I started attending online Alpha course because that that is during the MCO, mm. so it was online on Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. My I had to rush. Right, I had to rush to the study room, close all the doors, and put up my laptop, plug in my earphones. Yeah. And mom was like, "What the hell are you doing?" <laughs> and I was like, "Mom, it's an alpha course." Mm. She's like, "Oh, you're only gonna do it for two classes, and then you're gonna give up." Right. But I finished all ten classes. And I started reading the Bible every day, and initially, she thought it was just because I wanted to talk to the guy uh, at ten p.m. every night. Right. She's like, "You fat how are yeah. you? <laughs> you just wanted to be with the guy, but it's." Yeah, it's not like that. Like, right. it's, I can I can pretend that I like steak for dinner. Yeah. I cannot pretend my faith. Right. And I think because it was so consistent. Yeah. And I was so adamant, but yet I was very happy. And she didn't feel like I became a worse person, mm -mm -mm. or she didn't feel like she felt like I became happier. Mm. And I 
I spend more time at home. I spend more time with her, and I was always very bubbly. And she said that I was shining. Wow! And then I was like, "Yeah, mom, it's God." She's yeah. like, "Bullshit, lah! You, yeah. you're dating <laughs> uh, as the guy." I got to meet but your mom, Chloe. No. <laughs> I, I feel like I really want to meet your mom now because I think she's like what a character, you know. Um, I'm but, so interested to meet but her because now. Because of that, because I was because I respected my. My religion. Yeah. I respected God, and she felt that respect. Right. And she loved me. And all parents, anyone who's listening to this, if you're going through a hard time transitioning, just because your parents are not uh, Christian mm. and you find it hard, it's just 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 do what you do. Mm-hmm. Don't try to argue with them and respect whatever you're doing because your respect, the energy of your respect, it. It transfers to your parents, mm. and your parents will respect whatever you're doing yes. because they love you. Yeah. And that is what happened in my family. Yeah. And when I went to church, my mom was like, "You are so stupid. You wake mm. up early in the morning on a Sunday just to go to church. You're wasting half a day, yeah. half a Sunday, which is so ridiculous." But then, because I went every single week, mm. and she knew how important it was for me, because mm. I would tell her, "Mom." From this time to this time, I won't be able to have breakfast with you. I'll have a later breakfast with you. Would that be okay? My mom was like, ah, okay, la, do whatever you want to do. And then after that, just because I woke up late, she would wake me up. She would knock on my door wow. and say, hey, Come uh, on. wake up at 11. Yeah. Your church church is at 11.30. Aren't you supposed to go? And I'm like, oh, yeah, sorry, mom. I'll go. She's <laughs> like, don't say sorry to me, man. Say sorry to God. <laughs> wow, yeah. that's amazing. So yeah. your parents are definitely okay. And your yeah, mom is, okay. I would say, in many ways, also supportive. Uh, yeah. Because of the example that you put on for yeah. Christ, I didn't argue with her. Yeah. It was a very peaceful thing mm-hmm. in my family. Mm-hmm. So yeah, my mom was okay. What about your dad, Koyu? Uh my dad is a lot easier because he came from. But he, I won't say he believes in in Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. He's open to it, which I'm already very thankful. Right. Because I managed to drag him to attend an Alpha course with me. Oh wow! So he was always okay with. He knew that people talk about God Mm -hmm. and he knows that there's... He doesn't like Christians Mm -hmm. because he was cheated by a Christian once and Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Mm. Um, He had a very bad experience with Christians, but Mm. um, he's not adverse to understanding it. Mm. So I prayed about it to God and um, so happened there was this Alpha uh, course open Mm -hmm. and um, I prayed for courage and I went to my dad and I said, Hey dad, would you mind spending... One day, every mm. week, just one hour with me, just a father daughter time. Yeah. And you know, my dad would never say no because I was very bit, smart. <laughs> yeah, I was like, just one hour of yeah. a week. And he's like, yeah, sure, 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 I'll do it with you. So I did mm. one class, one alpha class with him, and he hated it. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't like it because. Uh, everyone in that course was already Christian. Yeah. And they asked questions w- which were really profound that he didn't understand. Ah. And he was very uncomfortable because he didn't know anyone. Right. And he said, like, this is the first and last time I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do it next week. Mm. And I just let it be. Yeah. But then I prayed. I was like, God, please, please make it a miracle. Like, please show me or him something so that he would continue and at least finish 10 classes. Mm-hmm. And... The second week, I tried again. I was like, Dad, just one hour, please. Just one. It's not one hour. It's like, I think one and a half. I would say it's one and a half. Yeah, yeah. I would say it's I one like, and a half. Yeah. And he's like, okay, first and la- uh, this is the last time I'm going to do it with you. Mm. And he attended. And guess what? Uh, he saw his friend. In the Alpha course? In the Alpha group. Like, his friend suddenly from nowhere just appeared and said, oh, someone dragged me in. Uh-huh. And his friend was there. And he knew someone. So his excuse of, I don't know anyone, doesn't apply anymore. Because wow. his friend was there. And you know this men, 50, 60-year-old men ego, like, my friend is there. Uh, uh, and the uh. friend said, hey, i see you next week, yeah? Uh. And my dad's like, see you next week. He, <laughs> can't, he can't not appear. But inside, I was like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he finished everything. Wow. He finished 10 classes. And... After that, I had to go to church for scripture reading yeah. during Christmas, and he went. Mm. I was like, Dad, I'm going to do it. Will you come just mm. to see your daughter? And he went. Both mm. of them went. It, even though they didn't ex- understand anything, yeah. they knew that the place that I was at, yeah. it was very peaceful. No one is bad. I'm not going to be a bad person, and I'm very happy doing mm. it. Mm. So they're very okay. Yeah. So obviously, like you said, you know, it's not an overnight thing, you know, and it's oh, yeah, a no, very it's gradual process. Yeah. Like how you say your mom from telling, ah, yeah, you don't waste your time last Sunday yeah. morning, half a day wasted to now yeah, waking to you up. waking me up at eleven yeah. o'clock and say, hey, you're late for church. So I think it's a very, very good process for Mm. me. But I prayed a lot for them. Mm. Uh, I won't say it's without its downs. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like I I think I shared with you just now about my mom asked me if she dies one day. Yeah, very interesting (laughs) story. 
<laughs> yeah. Very good um, question as well by your I, mom. I, I don't know why she suddenly brought it up. She's like, hey, Koi, you're a Christian now, right? Uh, I was uh, like, uh. yes, mom, I am. Uh, she's like, what if I die one day? Uh. Are you going to hold the joystick for me? So that was a very... She just asked me this yesterday. Out of the blue. Actually, out of the blue. She said, uh, I was just thinking, what if I die? Will you do that? I was like, mom, I know, you know that I'm a very devout Christian and I respect my God. But if you want, and I believe for Christianity, we don't need to hold the joystick because when we pray, we pray to God. Yeah. We don't pray with anything or we don't pray to anything else but God. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, but I told her, if it is your dying wish and you want me to hold the joystick when, uh, when during your funeral, mom, I will do it for you mm -hmm. because God wants me to love you. Mm. And she's like, but if you don't hold it, you don't respect the tradition, you don't respect the culture, the, the culture that right. we have. I was like, mom, but this is my religion too. Uh, she said something about, oh, it's disrespectful and people will think I'm not a filial daughter. I was like, mom, but if, that, if people don't respect my religion and they mm -hmm. want me to do that, fine. But from what I understood from my other friends, that now... If you go to funeral parlors, mm. uh, they prepare white flowers mm -hmm. for you, for Christians, so that you can hold a white flower mm. and pray with the white flower instead of a joystick. Mm, mm, mm. There are things like, I think it's how much importance you place on your religion. Mm -hmm. If you tell them, I, I'm a Christian, but it's okay, la, mm. I don't mind, la, I just hold a joystick, I just pray, then people will just do that. But if you place a lot of importance on it, but you don't come from a, an adverse uh, 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 a point of view mm -hmm. or you don't come to them as in you're very angry and you just want to fight for something because at the end of the day it's paying respects to mm -hmm. the dead to my to my mom or whoever who's um, in the f I mean who mm, the passed away yeah who has <laughs> just passed away mm. um, I think if you come from that and they know that you come with a very good heart and you just want to pay your respects they will try to change things because at the end of the day, it's your family mm -hmm. and they want you to be there and they want you to be feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. So I think at the end of the conversation, it ended up with my mom saying, I also die already. La. If you want to love me, you love me when I'm alive. You don't love me when I'm dead. Mm. You, you can bring 10,000 flowers or use a bunch of joystick. I'm already dead. Mm. Just love me now. And I was like, yeah, mom, I love you now. Mm. And God wants me to love you now. And she's like, ah, yeah, you love me, miss, you love me, la. don't talk about God. La. <laughs> it, it will, these kind of conversations yeah. will happen. Yeah. And I think it's just, when you love your parents, you need to have a lot of patience. Correct, yeah. I think patience is really one of the things that God often tests us with. If anything, mm -hmm. you know, he, he really tests our patience in the sense that, you know, to create that perseverance mm -hmm. in, in our walk and journey with him. Mm -hmm. And it's true, you know, because perseverance, I think, is a big theme in your life, the way I listen to it. Mm -hmm. Uh, how your friend persevered for you 10 years ago and it came into fruition, you know, when you called her mm -hmm. and how now your journey is going to be filled with also a lot for you to be consistently, uh, to consistently persevere mm -hmm, throughout mm -hmm. what's coming for you next. Mm -hmm. Now, we're slowly running out of time here. Time passed I so know, fast. I know, I realised that. Time I've passed so quickly, <laughs> right? And that's amazing and that's a good thing. Now, for one of the final questions I wanted to ask you is, of course, you know, now that, you had many an experience with Christians, you know, mm -hmm. uh, from dinosaurs do not exist to, you know, <laughs> ha having having your dad, you know, having a bad experience with Christians and you yourself being put off by Christians mm -hmm. as you were growing up. And mm -hmm. now today you are a child of God, right? Mm -hmm. And you, you wear uh, your ambassadorship for Christ. You wear your mm -hmm. identity as a daughter of the Most High God mm -hmm. so openly and so mm -hmm. boldly. What do you have to say about God now that you look back Wow. Um, it's, a, it's a big question, sorry. It's, it's such a, a big yeah, question. Yeah, it's quite yeah. a big question. I think um, I never understood God before because I used to think God is a human mm. and he is whatever I am and whatever I understand. Mm -hmm. But then now that I'm a Christian... And looking back at things that happened and looking back at the plans that God had for me until ho how I arrived here today, mm. God is something that is beyond my understanding. Mm. So it went from trying to understand God to just feeling it yeah. and feeling the peace and the strength and the everything, the kindness that God gave me, the what, mm. what I feel now in my heart. Mm. 
from from trying to understand that to feeling it, mm. I think. Mm. It moved from my mind to my heart. Wow. Um for people out there who's who are listening to this who maybe sometimes you have doubts or or don't believe in God or maybe already mm. believe in God, don't try to understand things that you don't understand. Mm, mm. Um faith comes from really just stepping out of your comfort zone mm. and praying, mm. constantly praying and constantly believing that no matter what, God loves you first because you are his child and then move on from there. Mm. Um, if you don't know, ask directions. We all ask directions from God. We always try to do things for some, someone like me. We try to do things first and then we regret and then we pray and ask God for guidance. Mm. But why did I not pray first? Pray first yeah. and God will help you and God will guide you. I, I remember asking my pastor, mm. like, how do I know that God is talking to me? How do I know that this is God? Mm. I think I remember my pastor said something. He said, um, God is like ways. Mm -hmm. When it's a straight road and you're on the right path, right? God won't tell you, go straight, go straight, go straight. Because ways won't tell you that. But when it's time to turn left or turn right, ways will tell you to turn left. Mm. And God will make it so obvious to you to turn left mm. or right that you will never miss it. You know it's God. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah, That's amazing. I, I, did I answer your question? You answered it in a completely very holistic and very wholesome way. Okay. And for that, that is amazing. Thank now, Koye, before I let you go, is it okay mm -hmm. if I pray for you? Oh, yes, please. Yep. Can I yeah. just pray for you? All right, come, let's pray for Koye. Lord Jesus, we just want to thank you for Koye. We thank you for her life, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your uh, never-failing faithfulness and love towards her, Lord, that when uh, her friends was praying for her, Lord Jesus, even when she doesn't even know about it, Lord, you have never left nor forsaken her, Lord. You have always always looked out for her, Lord. Even today, Lord Jesus, we all celebrate, Lord. Even when she said yes to you, Lord, the entire heaven celebrate, all the angels, Lord, celebrate, Lord Jesus, to welcome her into the family of God. And we are so thankful, Lord Jesus, to have gained a wonderful sister in Christ in your kingdom, Lord. And we just want to pray for her life right now, Lord, that as she gets to know you more and more, Lord, as she uh, grows in, in intimacy, Lord, in her relationship with you, we just want to pray, Lord, for nothing, Lord Jesus, but your Holy Spirit to fill her every single day, oh Lord, that she will learn, Lord Jesus, there's more and more about you, Lord. And as she delve deeper and deeper, Lord, Lord, you show yourself more and more to her, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for just loving her, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are so real to her, that today, Lord Jesus, she's uh, so boldly speaking about you and for you, Lord. So bless her, Lord Jesus, not just in her walk, Lord, but also, Lord Jesus, in the world, Lord Jesus. Bless her, Lord, in her career as well, Lord. Bless her, Lord Jesus, in the industry that she's uh, that she's in, Lord, that you have put her in, Lord Jesus, that you use her influence, you use, Lord, uh, all the platforms that you bless her with, Lord Jesus, to glorify your name, Lord. And more and more people, Lord, will come to know her, Lord, uh, come to know you through Koyit, Lord Jesus. So we thank you for her. We also want to remember and uh, a special prayer for Koyit's family, Lord Jesus, for her mom and her father, Lord. We know, Lord Jesus, that through Koyit, Lord, that you will also bless them, Lord. And so we want to pray for their salvation as well, Lord, that very soon, Lord Jesus, they will also come to know, Lord Jesus, uh, the love you have for them, Lord, that you love them so, so much as well, Amen. and that you also want to get to know them and have a relationship with them. So we pray for their uh, very souls, Lord, and we pray for their salvation, and we remember uh, Koyit's mom and her dad as well and also her siblings and her extended family thank you for her life Lord Jesus we bless her Lord and thank you for this time in Jesus name we pray Amen, Amen. now Koyit before I let you go yes. anything you want to say any last words this is the time to do it anything the Holy Spirit impresses upon your heart go for it um, I, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I think when I think the main difference, I think uh, there's something that a lot of people ask me, like, hey, what's the difference of being a free thinker yeah. and being Christian? Because they say that being Christian, mm. you have to live by the rules mm. uh, in the Bible, but being an atheist, you don't have rules, right? But I always remember something that uh, I, I watched from the Alpha course. Mm -hmm. um, you know when you play football mm. and you just kick the ball around on a big field without rules? Yeah. It's not football. It's yes. not fun. But when you have rules and you play within the rules and you know that if you play outside the rules, it's just wrong. You just have to play inside. And within that rules, there's so much freedom. Mm. And I think after knowing God 
And after being a Christian, I got so much freedom and so much peace and so much less stress. And I know what I want in my life mm. because what I want is what God wants for me. Amen. That gave me so much happiness. Amazing. Thank you so much, Koit, for coming today. Thank you so much for sharing as well. Thank you for being so open, Thank you. so honest and so raw. Thank and, you. you know, we're so blessed by it. We sh- I'm so, so sure that many people who are listening as well were very blessed, inspired and encouraged by it. So, Thank ladies you. and gentlemen, uh, we want to say to you guys as well, if you've been blessed, encouraged or inspired by this episode, and if you want to see more of this content, be sure to subscribe to the channel as well. Don't forget, we're also available online. You can follow us on Instagram. On, uh, on Facebook as well you can follow us there and of course we have a Discord community channel where you can join the server oh and, that's um, so cool yeah <laughs> we have I think we've got about 600 members now wow. in that Discord yeah okay, so it's wow, a proper so cool. community so okay. go on there join there you can make a lot of friends you can even ask a prayer there and uh, yes hopefully we'll see you guys there thank you so much Koei once again thank God you, bless you, you and thank you all thank for watching you. this has been a great episode of Let's Get Real with me Brandon Ho and Koei Yit yay, yay. thank you <laughs> we'll see you guys bye bye Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to yet another episode of our podcast. We believe and trust that you'll be inspired, blessed and encouraged by this episode. And if you'd like to see more episodes like this, be sure to subscribe to our channel, like this video and share it with your friends. Also, we have a Discord community where you can join, have fun and even seek for prayer. And of course, if you want to support this ministry, this studio and keep us going, you can drop your love gifts at the bank details that you see on your screen right now. Be sure to earmark Let's Get Real or LGR so that we know that your giving will be used for this show. Thank you so much in advance. Until next time, God bless. bless.